Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles and for today's audiovisual entertainment extravaganza we have Flip 63 on the Minsk map in a standard battle in the Italian Tier 8 medium tank, the P44 Pantera, which, let's face it, is basically an Italian Panther. Although there are some differences. For a start, it's Italian, and the Italians love things that go fast, so, well, providing you've researched the top engine, and Flip 6 has, this is a lot more mobile than the regular Panther. The gun is also very different, but we'll come to the gun in a moment. Uh, for now, let's just take a look at some of the other similarities that this tank has with the German Panther. And that's not necessarily a good thing, because the German Panther is a Tier 7, and this Italian Pantera is a Tier 8. And while the German Tier 7 Panther is not the best armoured medium in the game, this Tier 8 Italian version of the Panther has a very, very similar armour layout. And it's a Tier higher. And it actually has a worse gun mantlet. So that's not good. However, with that top engine unlocked, as you can quite clearly see here, this is an extremely quick vehicle. Which is just as well, because the armour isn't great, and it is an extremely large target, relatively speaking, as far as Tier 8 medium tanks are concerned. The gun, however, or at least once you've unlocked the top gun, is very, very nice. It has excellent gun handling stats with a decent aiming time of 2.1 seconds, 0.33 accuracy. Perfectly acceptable penetration with standard ammunition of 212mm and 240 alpha damage. More importantly, it's the first Italian tank that you're going to unlock that has this distinctly Italian version of the autoloader mechanism. It's, I believe they call it an automatic autoloader. Which does kind of beg the question, what does the auto stand for in autoloader if it's not automatic? Does that mean the Italian tanks have automatic, automatic loaders? Inquiring minds want to know. So, what makes the Italian autoloaders different is that they start the reloading process as soon as you fired your first shot. They don't wait, unlike other autoloaders, for you to empty the magazine before they start the reload. Flip has just decided he's going to make his move. Couldn't have picked the worst possible time to do it. Yep. Oh great, an AMD on his flank. And this thing only has 50mm of sidearm, and it's a huge target. So he did take a bit of a spanking there. Took a shot from the Leo, and then a hit from the AMD in the flank as he came out, so he's down at 50% health. So this Italian auto, auto loader mechanism, has its good points and its bad points. The good points are that when you have all three shots loaded and ready to go, it spits them out ridiculously quickly because it helps if you can actually hit the target. The bad thing is that once you've emptied all three shots, the speed at which it reloads the individual shots depends directly upon how many shots are loaded. So the first shot takes forever to reload, the second one slightly faster and the third one even faster still. So if you're constantly running around with an empty magazine, this tank has terrible damage per minute. On the other hand, if you do have all three shots loaded, even if all you're doing is firing off one shot and then waiting for that to reload naturally before you fire a second shot, not actually taking advantage of the autoloader mechanism until you really, really need it, the DPM on this tank is actually pretty good. And of course, you do have the reassurance of knowing that you've got that three shot burst capability in your back pocket as a kind of insurance policy should you really need it. Uh, flip, I don't think you want to go around that corner. That is a lot of enemy tanks, and yes, you do have all three shots loaded, but you're going to need more than three shots to deal with that lot. And your armor's fairly trash, and you only have half of your health left. And Flip appears to have come to this conclusion as well. In fact, he seems to be thinking ahead, not convinced that his team can hold this corner. Um, and why fight enemy tanks head-on if you don't have to? He's heading down to see if he can exploit the flank. And he almost gets away with it. And it's that pesky AMD again. And these little buggers are so incredibly hard to hit. However, throw enough shit at the wall. <laughs> that was actually above average damage roll. Just not quite above average enough. Left the AMD on 12 health. So he knows he can't go around that corner. Element of surprise has been lost and the AMD may not be the only thing out there waiting for it to come around the corner. And in fact, there's an enemy 45 TP on full health, and just, nope, nope, <laughs> sorry. Screw that plan. Taking a quick look at the map, 
I think you can see the writing on the wall for the remainder of his teammates on this flank. They are being overrun. Those who can fall back are falling back. Not all of them can. Um, well, if the enemy are going to be rushing through this gap, maybe... Maybe... Yeah, the Progetto is dead. He's just waiting there to get one more shot off. See if he can take someone with him. Where did the 45 TP go? Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah, the Progetto is dead. But he did get a shot in the 45 TP. Both teams have lost five tanks at this point. It's still anybody's game, although Flip's team have been forced back into the southern end of the map. So the initiative is definitely in the enemy team's hands, but there are only a certain number of places they can actually exploit to push through if they want to head further south, and that's one of them. There are a couple of natural choke points here. Well, there's nothing natural about them, they're formed by buildings, but you get the idea. And the 45 TP up there, who's just been joined by the T20, is in one of those choke points. But what about the other two enemy tanks up there? Flip could be getting outflanked as we speak. So rather than wait and find out the hard way, and yet the 45 TP was attempting to cut around and he did get spotted, handbrake turn to get this big fat Italian arse out of the way, and he's fallen back to a second defensive position. And he got here with seconds to spare. You can see that they're all rushing in an attempt to outflank the position that he was just occupying. And you can see here, he's demonstrating what should be typical Italian autoloader tactics. He's trying to conserve his damage per minute. He's not using that last shot to keep the reload as fast as he possibly can. Constantly emptying that magazine as quickly as they possibly can, regardless of the circumstances, is a frequent mistake that you see Italian auto-loading auto tank drivers making. Because then they have to suffer through that horrendously long initial reload. Of course, the circumstances don't always permit it. The enemy team are often impolite enough to not allow you the luxury of keeping that last shot in the bank and keeping the reload um, relatively fast. But if you do have the option and you're driving one of these tanks, you should attempt to resist the urge to just blow your load, as it were, every time all three shots are available. Although Flip6 definitely has to start killing some enemy tanks now. And there's the T20. And he is a one-shot kill, but he's probably going to get a shot into him as he comes around the corner. Yep, fine, okay, he took some damage. But he needs to start killing enemy tanks. Now, he's got the opportunity, with the extremely good mobility of this machine, to maybe work his way around the flank with all three shots loaded. There's the 45 TP. You've got to kill tanks. So now is no time to be worried about conserving ammunition. There's now only three members of his team left, and that AMD is the bane of his existence. Luckily, he didn't actually take any damage there, but he's had to burn the repair kit to get moving while caught sideways on before the AMD could fire a second shot. I'm pretty sure he managed to get moving in time to avoid taking a hit from the enemy Hummel. There's the IS-6. He's only got the two shots, but again, this is no time to be worried about conserving ammunition. He's got the IS-6, but he's not able to do anything about the KV-3, which is extremely bad news for the T-34 2G fake tank down there. And, well, he gets a shot into the KV-3, but it bounces, and that was the last shot available. Now he's got to suffer through that reload. It is two against five. Not great odds. And somebody's capping. Almost certainly the KV-3. And there's the AMD. Okay, wait for it, wait for it. Two shots ready to go. Missed. Come on, make it count. Finally nails that pain in the arse AMD, who's been a thorn in his side from the very start of this battle. Two against four, and more importantly, he's nailed the enemy scout. Got spotted by the AMD, obviously, so relocating and taking the opportunity to get some reload in. Moving up to spot targets, hopefully, for the M44. And there's the KV-3. He's got all three shots ready to go. First one, nothing. Artillery misses. Second shot, does damage. Third shot, doesn't kill the KV-3. And here comes the STA-1 as well. And he's caught with no ammunition ready, undergoing that really slow reload. Takes out the STA. Come on, Arnie, finish off the KV-3. Do it. He got him. Okay. Two against two, but the Hummel's got their position. RT was not hit, but he was splashed and stunned. And there's the SU-100M1. But this is a very, very dodgy shot. And, yeah, there was no way that was ever going to hit. The M44 is turning to try to get a shot into that extremely low health SU-100M1. But he's not actually 
relocating, despite the fact that he was just very narrowly missed and stunned by the enemy Hummel, which is probably why he misses the SU-100M1. If the enemy Hummel had just fired again at the same spot, he would probably have killed the M44, but, well, he doesn't. On the bright side, it is now two against two, and Flip has the advantage of knowing where the SU-100M1 was, so he can avoid him. On the downside, he is in a very big and not particularly stealthy medium tank. He doesn't have particularly good armour, and he doesn't have an awful lot of health left, and he's trying to find two enemy tanks who are almost certainly going to be hiding and waiting for him. There's an excellent chance that anything he finds is going to get the first shot off against him. And he's probably going to need some help from the M44. So what Flip is doing here is essentially a... I mean, he doesn't really have a better option, other than maybe driving into the enemy cap circle, which is almost certainly being watched by the Hummel. Instead, he's taking advantage of the mobility, because he is a big target. He is going to be spotted before he finds either the Hummel or the SU-100M1. So he's using the mobility to drive around largely in the open, and basically using his sixth sense to let him know when there's an enemy tank in line of sight and yet it's not going off. He's working his way around the flank and slightly to the rear of where the SU-100M1 was, and there's no sign of him. Has he headed south, maybe, to try to kill the M44? Possibly, but probably not. I mean, he survived this long, so he... Well, it would be a mistake to assume that the SU-100M1 was stupid. And as far as that guy knows, there was an M44 and a P44 Pantera down there, and he was a one-shot kill. So, well, he's clearly not around here. He would have been spotted by either Flip or the M44 by now. And Flip's Sixth Sense hasn't gone off either. So, what has the SU-100M1 done? I mean, you can probably make the guess that the Hummel is watching the cap circle. And with the low amount of health that the SU-100M1 had, and the fact that he is no longer on this side of the map, it would make sense if they had both fallen back to watch the cap circle. That would be the sensible thing to do. It makes the most of the limited resources available to the enemy team. And if they have done that, that's extremely bad news for Flip, because he's basically now into a two-on-one fight. And yep, he is spotted. The question is, is it one of them or both of them? And he's hit by the SU-100M1, but he's firing high explosive ammo. He must be out of armor piercing. And he's hit by the Hummel, more high explosive. He gets the shot, and it bounces, and he's hit again with more high explosive. The second shot finishes off the SU-100M1. The M44 shot lands far too late to be of any help. He's down to eight hit points. One more high explosive shell, in fact, one more high explosive splash from the Hummel is going to kill him. And with two out of three armor-piercing rounds loaded, each of which do 240 average damage, and the Hummel only has 300 health, he takes a bit of a risk here and decides to reload for the high explosive, because the Hummel is also reloading. And he only has eight hit points left. <laughs> but then again, with a 90mm high explosive round, only one of them needs to hit the Hummel in order to kill him. And so that was an extremely narrow victory for Flip 6-3 in the Italian P-44 Pantera Tier 8 medium tank, and commiserations to the enemy SU-100M1 player who, judging by his position on the enemy team, had almost certainly gone through his entire stock of armor-piercing ammunition and so was forced to try to win the match uh, with whatever high explosive he had at the end of it, but he didn't, and Flip 6-3 did. So, well played, I hope you all enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.